Ah, the audience is the peers. Real quickly there. Hi, welcome to Filmmaker IQ Live streaming show. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving here in the United States. So it's the day before holiday. Things are going crazy. Well, not crazy. They're, th they're kind of dying down. I think it's going to be a very nice, relaxing weekend, uh, Thanksgiving weekend this here in the USA. Um, let me just pull up my chat because I didn't actually have it on yet. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Let me just switch over this thing. So today's topic is gatekeeping creativity. Oop, did it go? I think it went. Okay. Um, so I've, while I was going through, hey, hey, how you doing? I have guys left hand puppetry, JD, Jack the Ripper, Harry Henry, and Mindo Works. How you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. So uh, I was going through, as I tend to do, unfortunately, <laughs> going through old... Uh, videos and I was looking at my 32-bit float video because like people start keep it's been getting a little bit of popularity recently uh, it's about time somebody gate kept creativity it's been getting a little bit of play recently I think because people are figuring out trying to figure out what they want to buy for uh Christmas and all that and so they're looking at 32-bit floating systems again so I got I think it's getting a little bit of buzz but I keep I, I was going through these comments and I I see it over and over again that I am gatekeeping creativity by saying things like you need to learn how to use your equipment. If you want to be creative, you need to learn how to do, how to actually, you know, record audio. If you want to be a good music, if you want to be a good, you know, recording audio uh, engineer, you know, if you want to do that, you should probably learn how your equipment works. And that includes learning how to set gain. Um, and just little things like that. But then I have those cues of people are saying, well, you're just gate, gatekeeping creativity. And believe me, I get, I get accused of this a lot, like a lot. I get, get accused of gatekeeping, uh, films for saying 24 frames a second is the, the frame rate or cinema. And I'm being told I'm gatekeeping people from, you know, becoming good audio engineers by saying they need to actually learn how to. Uh, gain their gain their system probably properly back properly DK key says I'm back well I was here last week but maybe you not have seen it uh, left hand puppet says gatekeeping can be good sometimes and but here's the thing here's what I, I everyone wants to say I'm gatekeeping this stuff but I think there are some serious myths about creativity that the wider let's say the population doesn't understand i want to cover two of these things first of all that technic the technical aspect that the, the fact that, that there is a difference between technical and creativity as if those are not m very deeply entwined with each other like people think well you know creativity is the left hemisphere brain and and uh technical understanding and 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 mastery is a right brain when in fact that's not even close to true. There's well, first of all the whole left right brain thing is overblown kind of myth out there. It's not really how it works. But on top of that, your mastery, your technical mastery of whatever field you're working in is how you get be creative. Uh <laughs> Chuck Hoffman says, "How is expecting someone to know how to use equipment properly gatekeeping?" Well, that is the, the, the that's why I wanted to address this point because I was getting told I was being a gatekeeper for saying, you know, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to properly set the gain on your audio recorder, you don't know how to record audio. And then, well, you're gatekeeping creativity. Like, no, I'm not. I'm literally, anyhow. <laughs> Uh, I love this subliminal story says you're gatekeeping. I don't think that word means what you think it means. I, I think that's, that's literally the, the, the attitude I should be having with all the, uh, with, with all these comments that I get on these, on uh, something like 32 bit float. Um, but I think I would give it to another analogy, uh, a, a perfect analogy because I'm a musician. If you wanted to be a fantastic trumpet player, I don't know if I'm fantastic, but I'm decent. If I wanted to be a fantastic trumpet player, should I learn how to play the trumpet really well? Or should I just, you know, get on the trumpet and toot some things and boom, I'm creative. 
um, I'm a brilliant musician because I can, uh, I don't need, I don't need to practice. I don't need to get like, I don't need to work on my double tonguing, which I've been doing a lot lately. I don't need to work on tuning. I don't need to work on all these technical aspects. I was going to get on trip and boop, 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 I'm just cat man jazz. No, obviously if you wanted to play an instrument, mastery of the instrument is required. It's like a, it's almost like a prerequisite if you, uh, to being creative. You know, you know, say, so how is anything in film any different? How is anything in video any different? How is anything in any other art program different? Like if you wanted to be an, a, a brilliant painter, should you not master the techniques of brush strokes when you, you know, learning, learning the, the basics of, of brush strokes, the, the, getting that motor skill of, of, of doing that precise, isn't that important? Of course it is. Of course it is. And I think a lot of you guys are, are catching on to my point because, and I'm not, this is not as of, this is not as a controversial take. It's, it's controversial on my comment section of the 32 bit float with certain individuals who seem to think that you don't need to learn anything in order to do your, but those of you who are viewer, loyal viewers, let me take a drink of my diet Coke here. Those of you that are lo loyal viewers here are, are actually catching on to the point right away. And I'm sure I'm going to get like comments saying, Oh, you know, you don't need to be, no, no, you mastery of the, of the pr technique leads to being creative. And I, and you know, the, and the, I just wanted to bring this point up cause I, uh, I didn't, when I was, I, I, I did not go to film school. I did not go to, uh, any, I did not take any formal education whatsoever when it came, comes to filmmaking at all, like zero. So I, but I have this kind of personality and attitude where I was like, I don't necessarily need to learn all that. I don't need to know what a, a decibel is in order to record sound. I don't need to know what a, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't need to know what a stop is for exposure. And it took me a while to break that, to break that thought line of thinking, to think, to find out like, no, you know, I, I should learn what all these things are. And my, I feel like my, my ability to create anything has exploded exponentially once you learn these things and once you try working with them. Um, but for a while I was, I was kind of like shying away from myself. So I feel, I feel the tug of trying to avoid learning the stodgy old ways of doing things. But once you, once you learn them and you master them, then it's like, it's a free ticket to do whatever you want. Now <laughs> it's, it's totally open. The, the world's your oyster. So I, I get, I, I, I'm baffled that I have to, well, I should just learn that YouTube comments are not, <laughs> are not well thought out, uh, things. So anyhow, yeah, I'm not gatekeeping creativity because I'm saying you need to master your, especially learn how to, how to set gain. Like, oh, you can't believe your guys are, you know, you're making people set their gain on their audio recorders. It's like, really? The hardest thing to do is set gain on an audio recorder. <clears throat> Anyhow, I'll get a lot of crap for that 32 bit float uh, video, even though I still stand hundred percent by it. <clears throat> Although now I own literally four devices that have 32 bit float. I don't use them. Um, I use them for backup, but I don't actually use them. <clears throat> Sorry. My ranting has caused me to drink the Coke in a funny way. Chuck Hoffman says, I would think that knowing how to use your equipment properly liberates your creativity creatively because you're not burning brain cells figuring it out. Absolutely. So another, the thing I got in my argument about that 32-bit float <coughs> was that if you're new to audio and you don't know how, to, how audio works, then you know, you're, spend, I, you're much better put your time into doing all the other things on a set than to try to figure out how audio works on <coughs> or how, or a to dedicate those few brain cells it requires to set the gain on your audio recorder. And I thought, if you are that novice that you don't know how to set the gain on the audio recorder on your filmmaking set, <clears throat> then, then really the rest of the, what you're spending time on is also going to be crap. <laughs> There's going to be levels of crap. If you can't set the gain on an audio recorder, which is the most basic thing to do in the world, then I'm not... I'm not expecting much from anything else you do. <coughs> ah, excuse me. That, that, that went down the wrong hole. And that sounded bad. All right. 
uh, <clears throat> most of the best filmmakers are technical geniuses. <clears throat> <clears throat> I agree with that uh, to a point, too. Um, you know, the thing you have to realize, too, is that Christopher Nolan may not be the greatest cinematographer in the world. He may not be that good of a cinematographer. But when you get to that level, when you get to the level where you're no longer, where you have teams of people coming together to create these things, then you don't need to be the best cinematographer in the world. Like Nolan can be the captain of the ship, <clears throat> if you want to think of it, the CEO, right? The CEO of the movie. He directs the movie in a, in a direction. He doesn't have to know how to be a cinematographer. He doesn't know how to know how to compose a great score. He doesn't even know how to write a great script because he can bring all those people together and then guide them to do that. You know, that's, I mean, I'd love to be able to get to that level, <laughs> but right now I'm in the process of where I have to do everything, just like a small business, you know, a small business person has to do literally everything from, you know, accounting to sales and marketing to, to, to at the actual business of what their business is, you know, but once you get to a scale up to a multi, a, a bigger business, you can have people that are specialized in marketing, specialized in sales and accounting and all that stuff. So the same thing with film. You know, same thing with film, but people kind of get, you know, or, or or maybe perhaps also because of the fault of auteur theory, they've kind of created this sense that filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino does everything on the set. Now, he doesn't do everything. He, he guides the, and Tarantino's more of a writer, director. So anyhow, so that's one, that's one, the myth I wanted to, well, not myth, but I guess you guys are all catching up on my, where I'm going with that. Um. But like, so that's one issue, right? The other issue that I, I bump up to occasionally, and it's another one that I think it's, it's one of those things that, that more, the more general population doesn't understand about art and movies and all that stuff. It's that limitations don't hinder art. Limitations actually help create art. If there are no limitations whatsoever, then it's a free for all. And then it's just as in the words of Jean Renoir, when the limit, when the technique is perfected, then everything is basically boring. And the only good stuff are people that are able to transcend the technique to create something meaningful and interesting. So think about like, I don't know, think about even like graphic design, like graphic design back in and uh, in the old days, I'm thinking, what's that guy's name? That the the uh, guy that did all the, uh, the the animations for like Hitchcock movies. Uh, in his day, graphic design was was pretty difficult to pull off. You needed like you needed you know, exacto knives. You needed to really carefully craft everything to make every, to make you know design look look good. So you make you make uh, he, is it the What's it? It's not, not boss. What is his name? Anyhow, you'll, you chat will tell me who it is. Uh, it's an, I, it escapes my mind for right now. Saul Bass. Thank you. Thank you, Shane Ford. Put you up on the screen there. So Saul Bass, you know, Saul Bass's day graphic design was really, really like a difficult job and it requires precision. You need to do a lot of work. Today, desktop publishing makes, you know, graphic design super easy. Super easy. In fact, it's so much, I don't feel, I feel like so much of graphic design today is, I mean, there's, there's still quality graphic design out there and I still see it, but it's the style that you're looking for. Now it's the style becomes so much more important than just slapping, you know, a font onto a, onto a, 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 a web page. You know, nowadays you can go on, and I use this a lot, elements.envato.com and you can get like pre-designed stuff and it's, you know, it's serviceable. It's maybe not great graphic design, but then you're not being paid for great graphic design either. So uh, I think somebody was saying that Orson Welles quote, I don't know the exact quote of Orson Welles, but something goes like, <clears throat> like limitation is like the, 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 um, the genesis, not the genesis, but like the, the seed of creativity. It's like the more you have limit, the more limitations you have, the more creative you have to be. And that's really kind of the, that's really why, Limitations are the are the the fruit uh, the the fruit, but the again the progeny of uh, or creativity is the progeny of limitations. But you know, I, of course, I'm not. I'm always uh, being told that I'm gatekeeping 
like film for saying like 24 frames a second is a topic that I keep going back about. And I'm sure people are probably following me along, probably like, oh, okay, he's talking about 24 frames again. Eh, that's okay. But like they keep saying, well, you know, uh, what's next for cinema? Why 24 frames a second? So limiting. It's like, well, that's, it's not limiting artistically. I think it's lim- it, artistically is being able to work inside of it. And I don't feel like 24 frames at all is limiting at all. I feel like it's the basis of how we approach films and the, the doors are wide open of all, I mean, I'm still saying interesting and creative stuff being made. So anyhow, that's the two things I want, I want to say was basically creativity is not, is really a, comes with the mastery of the technique. You cannot separate the two, despite what the YouTube comments tell me. And then art, art is, limitations are the fuel for creativity and art. So and you feel like almost like a juxtaposition, right? Because if you master the technique, then you're no longer limited by your, your ignorance of the topic. Although, it's, it's like a push and pull. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm not sure if that works quite right uh, thematically, but... <laughs> That's what I wanted to get at. Those are the two points I want to get on this Thanksgiving Eve where we were all going to try to take easy. I'm going to, tomorrow I'm definitely going to take, sit at home and, and cook turkey. When I made a, I, I brined my turkey. I bought a turkey, but I, I had a turkey from last year frozen. So I was like, you know, I'm going to cook that. It looks fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to make that. I'm going to do sweet potatoes and beans and gravy and stuffing and that'll be it. Harry Henry says, to me, there's a Goldilocks zone where when it comes to influence, imitations, limitations on art, you can't tell certain stories if it's too low. Yep. And if it's too high, you know, it becomes meaningless. It, I feel like also that's what's happened with Hollywood movies. I, I feel like absolutely that's what happened with Disney. Because Disney is now like we have all the money. Well, there's two reasons I think what happened with Disney. We have all the money in the world. But on top of that, Disney's on this, this ridiculous like <clears throat> this ridiculous treadmill of just putting out content. And I feel like that's just, it's just, there's no room for, for any kind of inspiration. There's no room for any, any reflection. It's just a constant churn out material, churn out material. And I feel like it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so, so, so tiring. Um, I guess we should talk about the Bob, Chapek situation where I mean I don't know any more details I just kind of skimmed the headlines he's out and they're putting Iger Iger back in probably make a great little uh, studios video although I'm always afraid to do a studios video about Disney because Disney is such well trodden territory the corporate history of Disney is so covered in 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 agonizing detail because that that studio particularly has a very you know is a fascination about Dis- the Disney Corporation under Walt Disney and then later later years right um but i i also feel like the problems that bob chapek is dealing with now and i'm not i'm not i'm not uh i'm not original in this thinking the problems that he's facing now were really the results of everything that Iger was doing and then chapek just happened to receive all the crap all the the trajectory where Iger was taking everything right he rode the waves at the top if you watch my studios videos you'll see like all the ceos it's always boom bust fired boom bust fired it's always like that right so Iger went to the very top he resigned or was I think it was my maybe forced out so he got out right at the very top and then Chapek picks up from the to the decline and so Iger's gonna come in either at the either at the height of the decline or maybe toward the hope I mean I don't know depending on depending on what really happens I don't know I haven't studied Disney we're either at the start of the decline or we're clo- closing on the bottom. I don't think we're closing on the bottom. I think there's systematic problems at Disney that they ha- they can't they they just haven't figured out yet. So, you know, Iger might be the villain of it. it might be that old Batman story where or Batman saying, you know, he he exited before he became the villain. And I don't know if he's going to be villain once we once we bottom down there. As I always said, you know, the most dangerous time for a company is when they become number one. And Disney was number one for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a troll tournament, but he is holding me hostage right now. I hacked his Wi-Fi, but he can't come into his basement right now or he'll give it away. Help. All right, DK. I'm not sure what that going, but we will, we will have to 
Okay, we, is there a longer conversation I missed? I hope it stays as it is. I have never been a fan of vertical video, although I've had to use it a couple times. Talking about very vertical video. I've talked about that in several other cases. I don't, let's see if we can... Let's see if, if anyone has a direct question of it. Have you seen The Fablesman? I have saw... I saw the trailer for it. I kind of feel it's a little... It's a little too self-congratulatory. I'm not... I, I mean... I don't know. Wait till, you know, I th- I haven't been to the movies in like six or seven months. I've got that Regal pass where you can go for, you know, like four times a week. I might do that here in the next couple months because I've got, I mean, obviously I'm not doing a bunch of musicals and all that. I'll probably, if, if I do, I'll probably go see that. But I just feel like I'm watching. I'm like, man, Spielberg, you're just, it's, you're just like, I want to prove myself out tour theory. Cause it literally the trailer is like, this is everything Spielberg has said about his childhood. You know, his dad took him to see the greatest show on earth. You know, he would mix with, with trains and he would crash them together. He made his own movies on six, eight millimeter. It's like, I get it. I get it, Spielberg. And then uh, something about Spielberg's cinematographer. I think it's Chivo. Is it Chivo that does it? I'm, or, uh, I don't like the look of those movies. It's, he's, they, everything's got this super pastel kind of look and it's like it, he's like the only director that uses that look and I just don't like it like I just I just don't like it just it feels so phony to me so I don't know <laughs> I don't know if I'll go see Fables I mean, I probably will because it's like why not what's the point oh here we go after my heart talk about frame rate what's the I wonder what's the point of pushing everything into 24 FPS when most displays are natively 60 or 120. I think you can make a movie feel like 24 in a 60 FPS container. You can. It's called 3-2 pull down. And it's also called uh, 24 um, uh, partial frame, PSF, partial segmented frame. But then again, it's still 24 frames a second. So can you, I mean, no, you can't make 60 frames look like 24. You can, however, do a, a certain technique and I might actually end up doing, I, I was supposed to talk with maybe the guys who do the true cut film. We'll see if that happens or not, but I have a theory of how to do it. And uh, I might be able to do a little video about how to make high frame rate kind of look egg the look of, of 24 frames a second. However, it still doesn't quite work. It still isn't 24 frames a second. It still has got a little bit of that soap opery if you know where, how to look at it. But I mean, if you, if in certain shots, it can look okay. It can it can fake the twenty four frames per second look, but uh, but anyhow, I, it's not. I don't think we're pushing everything in twenty four frames because I'm not asking you to put uh, video games in twenty four frames a second. I'm not asking people to do like football games in twenty four frames. You know, sports should not be twenty four frames a second unless it's like a unless it's like a a, a movie sports. Then it should be twenty four. But if it's like live sports, I don't think it should be twenty four. You know, there's a lot of things that shouldn't be twenty four. It's just cinema should be. Um, because it doesn't look good, it doesn't look as good anywhere else, any, in any other format. I mean, I'm sorry, that's just a st- statement. Oh, there we go. Harry Henry says a good demonstration of the Goldilocks zone is the two Star Trek movies. The first film had so much thrown at it, no amount of money could save a boring story. Yeah, that first one was so boring. The second one had enough had enough of budget, but they still had a creative and resourceful. So we got the best Star Trek film with Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Nine by sixteen. Ah. So this morning, I um, I think I used to hate stories and TikTok videos and all that YouTube shorts and all that crap that they they try to push on you. I used to hate that, but then the Instagram algorithm figured out figured out what I liked, and then they've been feeding me that, and I'm like, well, okay, I can spend I spent like a thirty four minutes looking at at nine my sixteen videos a day. Um, and I got to say that that's when you watch stuff on your phone, nine by, vertical video really is superior in every which way to, to wide video because you can just go through and scroll with your thumb, do that thing with your thumb. It fills the whole screen. You get that sense of, of uh, I'm sorry, vertical video for phone use is just superior. It just is. Um, I think anybody that disagrees with me doesn't actually use their phone to watch those kind, that kind of content. Um, but, oh man, oh man. <laughs> yeah, so my, my, my kryptonite is apparently rabbit videos. That's right, rabbits. Like, I've got, I get these 
videos of rabbits, like slow motion of a rabbit doing the, f- the flop. Boom. I could just sit there and watch that for like a long, long, long time. <laughs> long, long, long time. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's what I think. 9 by 16 is for that format. Again, it's the same thing I'm saying with, with film and 24 frames a second. 24 frames a second is great for films, but it's not great for live sports. And, live, and I wouldn't want people to be gaming at 24 frames a second. Just like, you know, Instagram stories, I feel like that kind of content should be 9 by 16 It just, it works better. Now, if you're, if you're browsing on a computer, I get that. It's not as nice looking, but yeah. Anyhow. There we go. Andy says, personally, I love 29, 21 by 9 over 19 by 6, 16 by 9, but screens and devices would seriously have to evolve to support it natively. I keep going back and forth whether I like it. I'm not going to use 20, 21 by 9 because that's sort of the TV format. The, the, the real format is 2.39 aspect ratio. And I keep going back and forth whether I like to use that or not. And I keep saying to myself, I should use three, you know, I, I don't want to use it for everything. And when I and when I find myself using it, I enjoy it, but I also find it also confining and constricting in certain aspects. And you know, if, if for like for a comedy film, 23 2.39 just feels too serious. Like a comedy film feels like a little more laid back and natural if it's 16 by 9 rather than than the, uh, the, the cinema scope aspect ratio. But if you're doing something that's a little more dramatic or something, even some dramas, if it's a personal drama, it just feels too distant and epic in scope. Like you need to have a little bit more openness. That's what 16 by nine gives us, you know? And that's why a lot of movies even kind of going back to the, you know, the four by three format just is a little more personal introspective closeness to the smaller uh, aspect ratios rather than the wide. <laughs> DK says, I'm watching you in 9 by 16 and I just tilt my head to the right and right 90 degrees. You know what's weird? When I was a kid, I would sit on my couch and like lay on my head and watch TV that way. And my parents, would, my mom really would say like, hey, you're going to watch, you're, you're going to mess up your brain. You're going to start seeing the world sideways and shit like that. I never did because like my brain always like I know I'm laying on my head. I'm just going to interpret everything as as sideways. 2.0 Univision is the good things the Netflix is pushing. Great aspect ratio. I, I I don't know. Are they still pushing it or is that more of an old story? Because I feel like I feel like you know it's like House of Cards did the 2.0. Um, I don't know if if Stranger Things does. We can look it up real quick. Aspect ratio of stranger things i feel thing i mean i i i do like 2.0 sometimes like you know i was say, i was talking about how 2.39 has this sort of uh, like offensive like over the top kind of epicness um but but then 69 is a little too open so you want like a halfway point 2.0 is a good one i guess uh yeah stranger things is 2.0 so yeah they're using that for 2.0 Cool. All right. TikTok is the new heroin dumbing down the nations worldwide, except for China. It's regulated there. Theory, feel the irony. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I you know, I mean, luckily the heroin I use is uh, is rabbit videos. So I mean, I, I also refuse to, to uh, install TikTok for that reason. I'm gonna. I'm, if I want my brain scrambled to be by American mega mega corporation conglomerate media entities. I know, right? I used to be religiously anti-vertical video about five or six years ago. Now I think it didn't age so. Now I think that didn't age so well. All right, cool. I'm, I've, I've won over one convert who believes with me, agrees with me that vertical video is. And and the other thing people always don't get, like yes, vertical video is great for these devices, not for movies, for these devices. That's it. That is it these devices if you want to go see a movie you are not going to see it in vertical so stop thinking everything needs to be one way or the other (laughs) 
2.35, 2.39, 2.40, which is the best or correct format. 2.39 is the official like number that uh, I believe the SEMT and all those uh, like official description. 2.39 is the modern CinemaScope uh, ratio. 2.35 was the original CinemaScope uh, back in the 1950s. It was like the first movie was 3.35. 2.4, I believe, is just a rounding error. <laughs> I don't think people that just don't want to write 2.39. So I think that I think that that's the answer to that question, as far as I understand it. Yeah, 2.0 gives you a cinema feeling of 2.39. Well, it doesn't give you as much of. I think that's the thing. 2.39 can feel like. Like you're just cropping everything. Like you're just losing everything. So that's what's good about 2.0. It's like I'm giving you a sense that yes, you are watching a movie, but it's not as like like fantastically oppressive as 2.39 is. And and so 1.6 or 1.77, which is 1699, is sort of just common everyday television now. So we've just associate. You know, I keep bringing up The Office because like the when I, and I, when I talk in class. I talk about television. I talk about well, the office. Well, the office is sixteen nine. You know, everything is te- television is sixteen nine. So, yeah. Uh, forcing your brain to compensate for lying on your side is probably good for the noodle. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we got some pushback on the two point two one version. I'm not a fan of the two point one ratio. Two to one ratio. TV theater screens do not mask it. So no matter what, you always have black bars in the picture. Uh, well, in the theater, you can always mask any aspect ratio. I mean, it's just a matter of changing the curtains, moving the curtains. But yeah, I, I agree. You, I mean, you're always going to have black bars. The question is, what? How much black bar do you want? And I think, uh, I think, two point three, uh, two point one, two point zero is a good compromise. I mean, again, not for everything. Like you know, if I, if I want, if I was shooting an action movie, I think I'd go full two point three nine. If I'm doing like a Western, I think I'd go to a 4.2, There's some situations where I would probably go f- step on the gas and go for the 2.39. I think the 2.0 is if you want to have a feel but not be that bold of a statement with the, with the again, one of those things where it's not always a, applied to every situation. Uh, maybe 2.40 was Todd AO. I, maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think I forgot about that one. Uh, the coolest YouTube update was when they let video actually made their widescreen formats actually be that large. Yeah. You know, like the, there's an old debate about whether or not you should be able to, you should add black bars to, to, uh, YouTube videos. I sort of feel like that's that no longer the case anymore. So it's not an issue, but I'm, I am, I am of the old school ilk that you should always upload, uh, broadcast standards to YouTube, like broadcast file sizes and like i don't believe in uploading i mean you can i don't i just don't like the idea of uploading a like a like a uh was a 2.7k to to facebook or to youtube because it feel like well if you're going to shoot 4k it, there's no point in downscaling it to one 2.7k just to upload to 2.7k or whatever shoot 4k upload 4k or shoot hd upload hd shoot 4k upload 1080 you know <clears throat> That I just I, I I always tend to gravitate toward like I want to give a deliverable that I could give to like a uh, like a cable company or something like that or a movie or a television network even you know that's that's I think the 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 proper way of doing things of course you know YouTube allows you to do whatever so I'm not gonna knock you for a second I'm just saying if someone asked to me <clears throat> what size I give anyhow you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> Do many movies go with 2.39 without considering the story? Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um, you know what's interesting, too? Like, a show like The Expanse. I haven't talked about The Expanse in a while. But if you watch the show, it bounces a lot between anamorphic 2.39, where you can actually see it's the, the bokeh's, you know, oval-shaped, and then back to the 16 by 9 spherical. It does that a lot. I think also, you know, as a way of telling you, like, where you are in the story, because someplace things happen on Earth, some things happen in space, and they just bounce. They, I think they use that as a way to, like, visually signal, like, okay, now we're in a different location or a different kind of, uh, you know, setting. So, anyhow. All right. Super chat from Cart- Garden. Oh, thank you. $20. Jeez. 
Thank you so much, bro. Happy to finally catch you live. I'm producing Los Angeles on local movie making bear badge connect counselor. I've used your filmmaker IQ videos to teach litter hundreds. Oh, thank you so much. I use for, oh, thank you, Carden. Well, if you're ever around and want to get, get to get, hang out, I'm also in, in, well, I'm outside of Los Angeles. I'm in Temecula, which means you, you've probably seen my, uh, the ads for Pachanga. That's literally right next door to me. So <laughs> we're not that far. We should, we should uh, check it out. We'll see what you guys are doing. So, yeah, thanks for the super chat. Ben Dover, Benjamin Dover says, vertical video is clear superior for dancing ladies video. I, I, I've, said on, I've said that on this channel. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let's see. Black Magic cameras shoot natively 2.4. Yes, they do. They can, at least. They can. I, I, the uh, school has a bunch of Black Magic uh, cameras that they loan out to the students if they want to borrow them. It's the Black Magic 6K cameras. And they're pretty cool, I gotta admit. They've if you want if you ask me the difference between the Black Magic 6K camera and something like my Canon 70, 70D, 7D, C70, that is. Um, obviously I think my 7 C70 is a better camera, but it's also probably, I think, two and a half times the price of the 6K. So yeah. I really do like those black magics. Although the funny thing is that they got all these cameras for the students, right? So there's, well, I mean, there's, they lost half in a, in a situation we won't talk about it right now, but they, they have these students, cameras for the students, but they have a uh, 35 millimeter lenses, manual Rokinon lenses for them to use, which honestly, not the best lens to give a, a novice. I'll be perfectly frank. Not the best lens to give a complete novice to filmmaking is a 35 millimeter manual uh, n with no, with no image stabilization. I get it. It's probably one of the cheaper lenses you can get, but I feel like even a decent like kit lens, 18 to 55 millimeter with some image stabilization might be something better to give a student than a 35 millimeter manual that the kids don't know how to like hold the camera steady or focus half the time. <laughs> uh, not to be cruel. But they know, they know. I, I, I talked, I told them about this in class. I was like, you guys need to hold your camera steady. <laughs> black bars on OLED or good TVs aren't as much an issue as they used to be. Now they can be pitch black. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Every theater I go does something different with their masking. Yeah, I know. And some theaters they don't even bother masking. They just like, ah, screw it. And just leave the screen white, basically. Yeah. Regal does not. Yeah, sounds about right. Ooh, I use a folding phone with a 4 to 5 ratio. Best of both worlds. There you go. Beat the system. Super chat from now. Oh, Garden again. I shoot Panavision. Oh, sweet. Ultra Panavision 3 to 1 ratio on 8 millimeter film. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I kind of want to see that. I'm kind of curious. I got to check out your channel or something to see. If it... Did you put some on your channel with that? I'm kind of curious now. All right, uh, Mark After Dark. I'm currently deciding what aspect ratio I want to shoot a short film, 4.3 or... It's, those are two extreme examples, 4.3 or 2.39. Those are some very extreme examples. Uh, the question I would ask is, what's, this, what's their story about? Um, if it's, if it's going to... Are you going to be more of a personal story? If you might want to do 4.3 if it's more of a personal, like intimate portrayal of some actors. Because actors photograph real well in 4.3. Um, 2.39 is more about epic landscapes and big spaces and stuff like that. <laughs> Future screens should be one-to-one -one and let the content use it as needed. No, nah, I don't think so. Because uh, the problem with one-to-one -one is it's, it's very geometrically wasteful. You know, because we know, we know going forward at least what the, uh, I, I know I'm probably being, I'm being, I do a habit of mine, which is to analyze a facetious statement, but it's fun to do that. So one to one is very wasteful because we know for sure 1699 is a standard that's going to be echoed throughout most of the, as far as what we have, as far, you know, 1699 HD and then UHD standards, they're all going to be at least 1699. So if you go to one to one, you're wasting all that space, especially for a TV screen. You know, again, vertical video is for phones. It's not for TV, not for home viewing. Uh, but uh, so anyhow, so. If you do one to one, you're you're basically never going to use that that tall of an aspect ratio, anyways. So that's why one to one won't, won't happen. But I th you you know sixteen by nine is probably well the standard for UHD is sixteen by nine. So 
that's going to be your TV side. That's, that's just period. Why would you, you wouldn't, because the, the content standardization is everything's going to be delivered through 16.9. Whether you black, you, you know, you can mask off the top and bottom. It's because it's just going to be 16.9. If you got, if you got, I feel bad. It's like, I feel bad for people that got two twenty nine twenty one point nine two or 21 by nine, six screens. Like, oh, I'm going to watch my, yeah, but not all movies are, are cinema scope, <laughs> you know? So, Cardin, man, you don't hit the super chat. I'm reading your comments. <laughs> Uh, but thank you again. I'm a eight millimeter Bolex with a 16 millimeter gate swapped out, huh? On day, oh, okay, okay. On a daylight reel, it reaches over three one to three 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 point one to one. Wow! Invented by Nicholas Kov- Kovitz in Canada. That's cool. It's kind of cool that you you know I, I've never I've never shot motion picture film. I've shot stills film. But the idea that you can, you know, that's the cool thing about film is you can change the gate and stuff like that. They, I know with a, if you can mod out a, a a camera, you could probably get to do a, a scan like a like a larger, longer than, than wide just by rolling the film as it's being exposed. Well, that's kind of a slit scan technique. But yeah, you can't do that. I mean, you can, you can obviously change the gate in digital, but you just basically lose the resolution. But <laughs> that's cool. But you can do a. So eight millimeter Bolex with a sixteen millimeter gate swapped out. Ah, that's neat. <laughs> Very cool. Anyhow, I've always found the black bar argument kind of weak. Your brain immediately ignores it. Yeah, which uh, what aspect ratio would be best for my movie about a stepsister who gets stuck under a table? Ooh, let's talk about that. What kind of table is it? I think three by four or four by three might be a good aspect ratio for that, just because I think it would it would uh, squ- it would frame the table better. Uh, uh, because I'm uh, unless you're unless it's like unless you're shooting like a really long dining room table, then maybe three two point three, and then only shooting it from the from the direction of the lengthwise. But I think four th- th- uh, four by three will allow you to see more of the legs and more of the crampness of the frame. But then again, you know, you can also use 2.39 and then just use the table legs to create that framing. It doesn't have to be the framing itself. Anyhow. <laughs> Galaxy Quest. I ended up actually going ahead and upgrading my phone because my phone was a little dead. This is uh, the new phone I got. And um, the problem with my old phone was I literally had um, the, the charger kept coming undone. And it bugged me. So, it really came to the point where it's like, if I put my phone on a charger at night and I got to wake up tomorrow morning, and my phone's my alarm. What happens if I, if, if I don't have it plugged in just right and it dies halfway through. So it's like, well, that's, I got to get a new phone because the, the charger needs it. And then I was demonstrating the, the, the students on, on my college get an opportunity to rent the um, DJI Osmo pocket. And the Osmo pocket has a thing where you can plug the thing into your phone and use your phone as a, as a viewfinder. And that was pretty cool problem with my old phone is uh, the connector was so weak that it kept getting disconnected so i kept losing signal it's like well i can't use it for for uh for, for video so that's why it's like you know what I, I i'm almost done i was almost done paying off the old phone i'll just pay off the old phone and i'll get it and uh you know we'll, we'll just go with it we'll just pay we'll just we'll just pay for it i love how you answer these questions seriously i know <laughs> is that part of the charm of this show? I think I, ho- I would at least hope so. Um, I've got one student in my class who, uh, who has, who, he's a, he's a little odd duck. Um, I, I think he's obviously got some sort of, uh, con- you know, mental condition, but he's a pretty high functioning guy. So he's, but he's always like asking questions in class that are, you know, questionable questions. They're not great questions. They're questions you're like, eh, you could have saved that for after class. We'll talk to you. But anyway, he started reading all these, uh, these like, these like weird. Uh, I would best describe them as deep thoughts by Jack Handy, like very, very, like you know, kind of obtuse. So he started reading those. And it was really dark. He said, it was, uh, you know, in Toy Story, if a toy dies, then the car- then the child will be playing with a corpse. I was like, dude. That's some really dark shit for this class. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> and uh, so he kept asking me questions like, 
or what came first, the color orange or the fruit? And I said, and I thought, and I knew he was probably like messing with me, trying to ask a stupid question. And I was like, you know what? Let's look it up. And I, f- I found out that the fruit actually predates the word. So the fruit orange comes from China. It's a Chinese uh, citrus fruit. And uh, it predates the word orange, which came after the, named after the fruit. There you go. If you learn anything on this stream, it's that orange came, came before the, uh, <laughs> the, the, fr- the color. Uh, what phone I get? I got the uh, S22 Ultra. I, I don't know if I re- read this right. Is that a 105 megapixel camera? I, th- I think that, I don't know if that's correct, but I think it's an ins- ins- god-awfully insane camera. Like an like insane, stupid camera. What I get from McDonald's? I, McDonald's is my cheap, 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 cheap lunch that I don't, because I, I, I need to go home after, after this, I need to go to the store and, and get stocked up for tomorrow. But I need to go, I also need to get my mom dinner. I didn't want to eat too much because I just wanted a snack. So they have the uh, two for three nine nine because of inflation, everything's gone up. Two for three nine nine deal, which is like a McDouble and a, a McChicken, ends up being about seven hundred calories. So it's like, yeah, it's not too bad for you know for a, like a late lunch kind of a thing. So I didn't eat anything else all day. And if you have the McDonald's app, you can use the phone. To, they have the like special deals. It's like get a free drink when you buy anything. It's like okay, that's that's how you do it. I'm ta- I'm giving you ways to live cheap. Probably not the best health. Um, people always give me crap about the health. Yeah, 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 but. You know, 700 calories is not terrible, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, Diet Coke because it just, it doesn't add more calories and I don't need to add more calories. Uh, someone once told me that oranges grow green and I clowned them. Turns out they were right. Yeah, they are absolutely true. Yep. And I've seen them green because I, I live near kind of, you know, I went to college at UC Riverside. That's, that's my alma mater. We are the Highland Bears. And UC Riverside is famous because they were a citrus research facility in the 50s. So the whole place is like covered with the citrus plants and oranges and stuff like that. So yeah, they're always orange. And then when they, then they blossom, or then they blossom, but when they mature and ripen, they turn orange. <laughs> that kid is messing with you? Of course he is. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, let's see. Chuck Hoffman, I actually recognize some of those questions from Reddit. Oh, somebody was, somebody was uh, asking Reddit questions. You know, uh, one of my most proudest moments on Reddit recently was, uh, and I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I try not to get too involved with comments and stuff because I, it literally does. When I respond to YouTube comments, it, it can take a large chunk of my day and just kind of turn my energy. So I try to avoid comments, although I feel like it also does not responding to online comments takes away my energy as well because <laughs> I want to be able to speak. So anyhow, somebody asked on Reddit, uh, this is a great, this is a, he, said, he said, my a company I'm working for has a budget of $21,000 they want to spend on video equipment. What would you recommend they get? You guys want to take a stab at that, that? I'll show you what the correct answer to that is. All right. Well, you guys are all typing. I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't hold you. I won't uh, s- saw, uh, wait for you. Wait for your responses. The correct answer for a company that wants to spend twenty one thousand dollars on equipment is hire a professional. Like literally, <laughs> uh, literally hire a professional. Oh, the kid in class is quoting Reddit. What's what? Daniel before met. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, if you, if you if a company has twenty one thousand dollars to spend on equipment. Hire someone that knows how to use the equipment. Yeah, don't, don't actually go out and buy equipment because $21,000 is a substantial amount of money. It's enough to actually outfit somebody to, make, to, to do some video production. You can literally build a decent production wing in your company, but who's going to run it? If you don't have someone that knows how to run it, it's just equipment sitting there in a, in a box. It doesn't do any good. So, And then if you do have somebody that, that knows how to run the equipment, then don't ask people on Reddit what kind of equipment you should buy <laughs> because that person should know what kind of equipment they want to buy because they're the prefer- they know how to do it. <laughs> so, hey, Samuel Davis. Is that Samuel Davis from class? I don't know if it is. S22 Ultra Gang. 
Or Samuel, Sam, Samuel Davis is com such a common name. I don't know. Anyhow. Yeah, so <laughs> people are saying hiring somebody, I would have guessed. Yep. Did I see? Nope. Nope. I did not. I haven't seen any. Mo I haven't seen much of any movies. I watched last night, though. I watched uh, the movie um, See How They Run, right? See How They Run. Is that the name of it? How they, yeah. And I thought to myself the whole movie, and the movie was not great, but it was entertaining. It was, it was cute. I, it, was, it is utterly forgettable, honestly. But it, it didn't make me upset or, or upset me. I enjoyed it. The thing I, about See How They Run, it's this movie by... Um, it's an interesting movie. It's on HBO now. It's directed by Tom George. It's it's a weird movie in that I feel like it's directed by Tom George in the style of uh, Wes Anderson, but not all the baggage that Wes Anderson brings with him. And it stars Sam Rockwell and Shorshi uh, Ronan. I can't never pronounce it. Shorshi, I think is how you pronounce it. And I and Shirley Ronan, so it's a it's a murder mystery, and they're they're on the they're uh, solving the case of somebody kills somebody at this play, for a, a Agatha Christie novel that's a play that has turned into a play, and it's and Sam Rockwell's like kind of like the detective who's kind of seen it all. He's kind of tired, and then Shirley Ronan is like the new up and coming uh, detective, and she's the constable, and she's like taking notes. It's got a very very much of a Wes Anderson feel without having the Wes Anderson kitsch. So it's got, it's got that, the very poppy colors, wide angle lenses, kind of very interesting look. The set design is gorgeous. It's absolutely freaking gorgeous. And I felt when I was watching the movie, I kind of felt like Shirley Ronan was impossibly cute. Like her, the entire movie is like her, mugging for the camera and I can't necessarily say it's a bad thing because she's just so freaking cute in the whole damn movie you're like oh man she is so damn cute in this movie and I'm not I mean cute physically I mean cute also in the way she she acts like her her acting the way it's the character's written the every everything she does is just like damn that's cute <laughs> it's one of those things where I couldn't stop watching it now maybe because I'm also you know single but damn she's cute in that movie it's all it's, it's I, I couldn't stop like she her cuteness to me for me at least overshined everybody else like uh uh what's his name um uh, sam rockwell good fine he's good he's good but he wasn't like particular like sam rockwell can be like a really in a movie he can like he can just like elevate a movie like crazy like he but sam rockwell can't compete with like the 100 watt bulb that is cersei ronan she's just like I'm cute. Everyone loves me. The camera loves me. You love looking at me. I'm so damn cute. Again, I'm not saying this is a bad thing because I enjoyed that part of it. I liked it. Um, but I couldn't, but it just, I couldn't get, the story was completely uninteresting because I'm just looking at Cersei Ronan the whole time thinking, damn, she's cute in the whole, and how many times did they say the word cute in this review? A million and a half. <laughs> that's, that's how much. Have I seen The Menu or Glass Onion? Those are probably on my list to see. <laughs> they they paid twenty one thousand dollars, but probably spent a budget of a hundred thousand. Well, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, I'm just, you know, those kind of the the thing I've discovered on Reddit though, is there's a Reddit obviously skews super young, and super inexperienced. I don't think a lot of professionals use Reddit. There are some, you know, red red thor, uh, Reddit subreddits that are a little bit more professional geared you know cinematography you might see a little bit more people that are a little bit more know what they're doing but like this is in videography which is like super super newbie stuff um like a lot of times people will go on reddit okay let me rephrase this here there's like what i was saying is there's a lack of common sense on reddit so people will go on hey my camera doesn't work what should i do and the answer always is contact the manufacturer but it seems to be the last thing all these people ever figure out like their first instinct is to to go on reddit and ask people my camera stopped working what should i do call the manufacturer <laughs> like i literally i bought and we're talking about like new cameras i'm talking about like i got this at an ebay 
you know, or a flea market for like 25 cents. And I'm talking about like, I just bought this Sony A7 S4 or whatever the hell they're known. And it stopped taking pictures. What should I do? I just got it like a month ago. Dude, call the manufacturer. Or at, least, at very least, call the person you bought it from and then exchange it for a new one. But it's like every single comment. Well, not every single. It's like, I see that over and over again. And, and like, and then the comment responses, like only, a, not enough of them are take it to your manufacturer, bring it to your manufacturer's attention, and take it to the store you bought it. Not enough of those comments. <laughs> that should be like the pin comment every single, call the manufacturer, call the store you bought it from, get another one, get another one. But anyhow. Everyone on Reddit sounds the same. It's so odd. Yeah, they all sound like my they all sound like me for some reason. <laughs> no. Okay, which I, I get what you're saying. With as many scenes as Sam Rockworld has stolen over the years, it's good to hear someone can outshine him. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Sh- sh- I mean, I guess it depends on how like it, 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 your mileage may vary depending on how attractive you think Shirley Ronan is. I think she's not my most attractive woman in in my opinion. However, she was like super, super cute. Right? There's that word again. But she also employed a very, uh, like a very lil- lilting, lyrical Irish accent. I know she's Irish. I looked her up while I was watching the movie because I was like, yeah, let me look up her. Because let me see what she looks like in real life compared to this movie because they really make her, they doll her up in the movie. But uh, yeah, I mean, she is Irish, obviously. Um, but she was born in Brooklyn, believe it or not. I think she might have moved over to Ireland when she was a kid. So, but yeah, she's, she, she employs that Irish accent in to full extent, full extent. <laughs> Anybody see Pearl? Mia Goth is a beast. No, I have not. There he goes. Sersha, uh, Sersha, Sersha Ronan. There you go. That's a, it's not Cersei like the Lannister, Cersei, Sersha, Sersha. All right. We'll go with that. Sersha. Uh, I tried to show my kid real cinema like 400 blows and they just want to watch PJ masks. Do I need to give them some up, give them up for adoption? <laughs> yes. I've not seen 400 blows, believe it or not. I, I know of it. I just haven't seen that one. Make them watch the bicycle thieves and be like one day kid, you could be on the streets like these bicycle, like the kid and the bicycle thieves. Bicycle thieves is a great movie. I probably should watch 400 blows. I should just do it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Glass Onion was a fun time. Just saw it yesterday. No pun intended. Cool. That's the new uh, uh, Knives Out movie, right? Yeah, I like Knives Out. That was that was a great movie. Uh, I prefer the menu over Glass Onion. Glass Onion was really on the night on the nose sometimes. Decent movie, but I preferred the menu. So many murder mysteries out right now. Yeah, that and the, how see how they run. Did you see Barbarian? No, I did not. <laughs> I should have watched Barbarian. My mom would like it. It's on, it's, yeah, it's on Netflix, right? Or something like that. My mom likes horror movies, so I should probably put it on for her. I blame short video content on phones for the people with numb brains. You know what's weird? Um, there, because of phones, a lot of young people don't know how to use a computer, which is bizarre. Like my generation, kids that are younger than my generation were huge like computer nerds right? they knew how to use all the computers that was the thing i'll get you don't know how to use your computer get a call it call uh, bobby over there he's a he's a whiz and he's only 12 years old he knows how to use a computer because he you know pc master race and all that but now because the phones have taken over a lot of kids don't even need a computer for anything so they're just all on their phones the whole time you know and maybe they'll use like a a, a chromebook but chromebooks are not technically computers <laughs> see what i did there Chromebooks are kind of dumbed down laptops. I mean, they literally are, right? They're not legitimately, like, it's basically like a, it's like an Android device with a keyboard attached to it. So anyhow, yeah, that's the weird thing. I got my friend of mine, and it's weird, th- here's the weirdest thing. My friend of mine was dating a girl, I guess she, and she was in her 30s, and she didn't know how to use a computer, like, cause she, for her photography. She wanted to do, like, photography and do all that stuff. Didn't know how to do, didn't know what folder structure was. Yeah, weird. Is it just me or has Sam Rockwell's filmography been kind of lackluster since he won an Oscar? I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's take a look. Let's answer that question by looking at Sam Rockwell's filmography. Sam Rockwell. 
let's see. He was in. He, uh, let's see. Wow. Untitled Carlos Ghosn's Extraction Project. That's a weird title. Extraction Project. What the hell is an extraction project? That's weird. The Heart, uh, Untitled Merle Haggard biopic. The Adventures of Drunkie. These are all movies still not to become. Argyle, Vital Signs. He's been like five productions that are in post right now. Wow. That's... See how they run was the last movie made. The Bad Guys and Mar- Marcino Ruby video short. The Bad Guys, Wolf. F is for Family, the TV series. The One and Only Ivan. Home Movie Princess Bride. Uh, Trolls 2, Wet World Tour. Richard Jewell. He was in Richard Jewell. That's a pretty good movie. Jojo Rabbit. I, I really like Jojo Rabbit. He's Bob Fosse in the Fosse Verdone Ver- movie. The Best of Enemies, After Hours of Josh Horowitz, Vice, uh, as George W. Bush in that, Blue Iguana, Mute, Blaze, Woman Walks Around, Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. I thought it was pretty good in that movie. The Dark of Night, Dishonored, Two, Inside Amy Schumer, Drunk History, Mr. Right, Poltergeist, ugh. Uh, f- flight, fans, flight Facilities featuring Sam Rockwell Down to Earth, Don Verdeen, as Don Verdeen, okay. Digging for Fire, Lording. Eh, it seems like he's got a pretty good, he's a, definitely a working actor. Anyhow. I've never seen Foreign Blows either. I just look up the screenshots and thought and that should be good enough. And just know that it's, it's uh, directed by uh, Francois Truffaut. So there you go. You know, you, you can sound like you're, you're intellectual now. Uh, that's true. Kids aren't pro- proficient with computers because they're so user friendly nowadays. Yeah, it's true. Like unless you get a kid that's like a hardcore gamer, those kids are probably pretty good at technology. But like your average kid that's not you know, maybe is like a mild gamer, they're not they're not super super uh, hardcore. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit was a good performance. Jojo Rabbit is such an interesting movie because I think the, the 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 population the general the uh, general populace is kind of soured on on Taika Waititi. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It just feels like, like, I mean, I guess Thor Love and Thunder was so bad. I mean, I never, I didn't watch it, but I guess it was her so bad. Somebody's car alarm going off there. But. <laughs> Mindo says, phones are actually computers. I'm an IT engineer, now manager. It depends on people. Really, I have young guys working for me if they have enough interest. Phone can be a powerful tool. Yeah, it's just not the same kind of like, there's, it's a different kind of computer, obviously. Anyhow. Three Billboards was his Oscar win? I don't remember. I think uh, that sounds right. Oh, Jack D. River. Did you see everything, every, everything Everywhere All at Once? Oh, yes, I did. Still my favorite movie of the year. I think I, it, it feels like such a long time ago, but it's my favorite movie of the year. Just is. I think that movie... That movie answers the question, is, has 24 frames a second really the end of the... No, no, we're still not done exploring this beautiful, beautiful thing. Because <laughs> that movie was amazing. Was amazeballs. Anyhow. I got to see at NAB this year, I got to see the editor for that talk, talk about how great Adobe is. Because he's like, because Adobe invited him. Because they, they edited it on Adobe systems. You know, the next video, the next lecture I'm going to do, not the, my classes are Thursday, Friday. So obviously we're off this week, but next one I'll be talking about how all the other programs, because I've been teaching them Adobe Premiere. They've been learning Adobe Premiere through the college and they get it free with, no, they get, they get student discount. They don't get, they can use it at the lab for free, but they can, uh, but they can, you know, get a student discount. And, and uh, I think a lot of these students, this is their first class ever taken in digital media. So, so they're kind of getting proficient with Premiere. They're feeling more comfortable with Premiere. And now it's going to be a time where it's, the next lecture will be like, okay, you're comfortable with Premiere. Here's all the other programs you could possibly ever want to use. And I'm going to include DaVinci Resolve. I'll talk about Avid. I'll talk about, I'll like, I'll, I'll introduce like all the other programs. And it's like, you know, all the editing programs. And then we talk about like, well, you know, then there's After Effects and then there's Photoshop and then there's Illustrator and then there's Adobe Audition. And then there's, you know, all these other programs that you can use to, to elevate your work. <laughs> fun fact, Adobe won't actually check to see if you're a student. That's a good, fact, good fun fact to know. That's why I tell the students, like, keep your MSJC email as long as you can. <laughs> as long as you can. Although, 
I finally got my Autodesk software because I got my uh, MSJC uh, email there. Uh, student discount is great. How much of a computer do you need to buy to have Adobe run well? It depends on, realistically, it depends on the, the footage you're working with. Like, like you can get a pretty old computer to run a very, like, well, the, 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 the answer is always when you're working with footage, it's difficult to, you know, work with, it's always make proxies. Proxies are the bane of my existence. I, if I have to work on a big project where I need to edit very quickly, I will take the time to make a proxy and the proxies will allow me to edit very quickly. Um, if I'm doing something that's very kind of bing, bang, boom, maybe I won't make the proxy, right? Yeah. Adobe has their recommended specs posted. But again, I think, you know, the actual running the software is not, is pretty easy. I mean, I think Ram is all, I did upgrade my laptop Ram to 64 gigabytes of Ram because it does 16 is a little cutting it close. So you need a little more than 16, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, um, I mean, it's, it, the problems with when you premieres problems are happen when you have, uh, footage that is hard, that's like compressed in a hard way. Like H.265 is still not very friendly, stuff like that. Uh, you know, 4K files that are H.265 that need to be color graded and all that. It 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 adds up, and that's where it kills the machine. But if you if you can if you can make those all proxies, the proxies run very smoothly on a very you know reasonably priced machine, not terribly expensive. Have I ever used Wondershare Filmora? I use it and edit my videos, and it's super easy to use. So here's the thing. I've been an Adobe user since 1997. Yeah, that was that 27, 25 years. So I've been using Premiere since then. I've been paying user Premiere <laughs> since about 2003. So I would ne I I get my job done on Premiere. So I I don't really I don't play with software in that that I already know how to. If I already have Premiere, I would never use another piece of software to do the same thing that Premiere does. Unless it does Premiere, something Premiere does better. Like I get why Resolve is better than Premiere's for color grading, but not for editing, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I, I've never used the Wondershare for, for Filmora. I think it was called HitFilm at one point. We talked about it. We, 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 I used to do roundups for, for software. I would include them, but I haven't used them. So I'm sure it's pretty easy to use. Anyhow. All right. Well, what time is it? Four, five, thirty, twenty-nine. So we've been on for an hour and ten minutes. Any more questions? Because I'll have to go soon, so I can go uh, fight the traffic. Fight the traffic, and go. Uh, I've been trying to. So this this dang ultra phone is too big to fit into the slot in my van, which I use for my phone because it has a little phone slot. So I'm trying to. I had to go buy a little clamp for it that will hold on to it, and it's designed to put it on your air vent. And I'm 3D printing a piece that I hope is going to fit into the slot so I can just clip it onto the, the slot there. So we'll see. And my phone's telling me, you need to do a podcast. No, no, no duh. <laughs> all right. Any more comments or are we all done today? Um, here's one. Oh, this, oh, okay. There's some spam stuff going here. Let's get rid of the spammer. All right. Let's go back here. How are you supposed to get Rec 2020 and 2100 to work? When I added it, the colors look all kinds of off. Yeah, I need to do a video on that Rec 2020. So basically with, um, because it's just a different gamut, if you're not, I need to do more research. I think you need to be shooting in 2020. You need to be able to, con if you're just going to, if you're just taking 709 footage and viewing it at rec 2020, it's going to look off because like the numbers don't correspond. Right. So I probably need to apply some sort of conversion. I don't know quite what it is yet, but definitely it's, it's definitely, that's, that's really definitely the issue. Um, I need to, I need to research that more, but you know, honestly, at this point, I, uh, can you submit, Maybe, maybe the YouTube comments will will uh, will uh, tell me here. Can you can you upload Rec 2020 to YouTube and have it look right? I don't know. Can, can YouTube display Rec 2020 footage? 
or is or is YouTube only sRGB? I don't know. Those are questions I should answer in a video thoroughly. I should thoroughly answer in a video. But anyhow. Sounds like an LTT type video challenge. Can John actually do real client work in Resolve? <laughs> yeah. Sponsored by Vessi because why not? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I appreciate Resolve. Although there are things that Premiere does that, believe me. So I, so a couple things that are newest to, new to Premiere. Uh, the thing I love about the the latest Premiere is they have the auto transcribe tool. Now I don't I don't think Resolve has auto transcribe. I might be wrong, but it literally transcribe. You can put a you can lay all your footage on a timeline, and then transcribe all of it. And it takes not very long. I use and I, I bought some software that paid three hundred dollars for this software called Transcribe, and it costs like twenty five cents per minute to run. So I don't need to even use that anymore because. Adobe just transcribes the entire timeline and then I can sit instead of sitting there and slogging through the video, you know, I can hit play. I can fast forward through it. I can play at two and a half times speed or two times speed and being able to read it while hearing it at the same time, I can go like three times speed because your brain just read, you're registering the words in your ear, but you're also seeing them. So you can, you can go through so fast. So if you're doing like an interview, or you're doing a documentary with a talking head, I can blast through a talking head in like a fraction of the time I used to be able to because of this transcribe tool. It is remarkable. Then you can stop it. Oh, there's a good line. Stop it and select that. Make that a select. It's, oh, it is so brilliant. I, I'm looking forward to the next time I have to do it because it's like, this is easy. This took, this is like the, this has brought back the fun in, in, um, in talking head. Cause I, the thing I hate about talking head interview stuff is I'm never organized enough to know where everything is. So oftentimes like, I remember that, that person saying that one thing that I want to use right here, where is it? But now I have the transcribe tool. I can type in, you know, I, he mentioned the word blueberry type in blue up. Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, I love this. I love, I love the Adobe transcribe tool. I'm sorry, DaVinci Resolve users. It's just not, something like that is undeniably great. Uh, hello, John, all happy Thanksgiving Eve. Hope everyone's well, despite the passing of, oh yeah, that's right, Tommy Oliver himself. Oh, uh, Jason David Frank. I never watched the Power Rangers, but I appreciate people of my age that did. And, and yep, yeah, that's a sad story. It was suicide too, wasn't it? I might be, I, might, I hope I'm not, I hope I didn't say what, I didn't completely screw that up. But, I just can't catch his old comment here. Resolve is now integrating AI into their software, which makes it revolutionary for some features. That's what everybody's doing. That Adobe has they call Adobe's AI is called Sensei. So st like that that uh, transcribe stuff is all is all AI. But anyhow, I mean, don't get me wrong. Resolve is a great program, and the great thing about Resolve is it's free, so everybody can you know can get a taste of it. at least. The, the the HD version is free. I, you know the studio version is a is is a little bit more. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Resolve is great, and it's great for color 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 balancing, color correction, stuff like color grading. Absolutely great. Don't I'm not taking anything away from Resolve. Use it, please use it. Hit film, Vimora, all that stuff. Use it all. Of it. Use what you can use. But don't tell me I got to get off Adobe because there, there's some things I like about Adobe. You are perfectly allowed to use whatever you want. Just don't tell me what I need to use. <laughs> All righty. Uh, anything else, guys? Getting ready to go here. I'm trying to think. What else What else I wanted to talk about today? Talked about the movie I watched last night. Talked about... Uh, Hmm, I think I'm out of things to say. How can that be? Let's talk about what we're all thankful for. All right. So I'm entering this, this uh, holiday season with, uh, with uh, feeling comfortably, at least financially, I'm, I can survive. I mean, a favorite, there you go, favorite Thanksgiving dish? Saved me. Uh, I'd probably be like sweet potatoes. I'm a big sweet potato guy. 
but uh, thankful for the fact that at least I'm, you know, I feel like I'm, the house is kind of somewhat under control. You know, I feel like I, I, this is a hard year for me, just pushing and getting stuff done. I feel like I'm kind of going to be crossing a hump with all this stuff. I'm thankful for the Wu-Tang Clan. clan. That's, a, that's a good point. I'm glad we brought that up. <laughs> Left Hand Puppetry says, I'm glad the filmmaker. Yeah, the live streams are, uh, haven't, been, haven't been happening because I've been, this has been a very tough year to like just to put everything together this year because I was trying desperately to get my house in order. My mom's health was declining. Now it's like I finally got a little bit of a handle on it. It's still, she takes up a lot of my time. And, and the reality is, is I've got to deal, the, face the fact that that's just my life. I've got to, you know, I've got to take care of my mom in the in the mornings at least. You know, uh, things will change. Things will change, but um, yeah, uh, I just got to realize that that's part of what I got to do. I got to do what I got to do. So that's you know, at least with upcoming holidays, I feel like there's going to be a kind of a pullback a little bit as far as what I need to, as far as the work I have to do. Although there are, I feel like it's going to get a little bit busy for me because I'm going to try cram a bunch of stuff. Be, my buddies and I are going to go to a, do a mountain retreat uh, the week before Christmas. So I want to cram all my work, get all my work done before that. So it's going to cut the cram a lot of stuff. Yeah, too many musicals. I did a lot of those. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, I haven't played any, my trumpet for about a month and a half. But then I got called for a Christmas Eve thing. So I'm like, well, I'm going to get my trumpet back up and get, my, get, me, get me going again. But... Yeah, so I'm looking forward to kind of taking maybe the volume down a little bit on my life. I don't think it will. You know, I, I think next year, you know, we'd all talk about resolutions and stuff like that. But I really want to shoot another short film of some sort next year. I've got some candidates ideas that I, need, I want to work on or perhaps play with. Um, but, yeah, I think that that's a good goal to have for, for next year because I was – it's kind of funny because a student of mine is shooting a, her project is going to be like interviewing the the staff at, at the college I work at. And they, she asked for some footage of behind the scenes of me working. I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't know. It's like, well, the only thing I had was the behind the scenes footage of when I did that short film at YouTube space, which is no more, unfortunately. And so I was sending her that and I was looking at it like, man, I want to, I want to go shoot. I want to shoot something where I don't have to be in front of the camera. I want to shoot something where I can take my time and light it well and make it look good and work on acting and work on performance and, you know, have some fun doing that. And I miss that a lot. I haven't done that in at least three years. Um, it's time to bring that back. It's time to bring that back. Absolutely. Well, let's see. Yeah, and then that's true. Uh, Donnie says... Uh, Another person we will miss is Kevin Conroy, who had cancer. He's the voice of Batman for many, many years. And the games as well. And, a lot, and as I said, I, I, I went down a path where I, I literally watched every single Batman movie I could find on on, face, on uh, WB. It was back then I had the DC Universe, right, before DC Universe was taken over by, by HBO Max. Well, Warner Brothers. And then fold it into HBO Max. Anyhow. Yep. So, you know, the good time to take stock with what we have. We'll take stock of where we want to go. That's a good, another good use of the time that we have right now. As a sort of a winding down the year. And, uh, yeah. So with that note, let's bring it all home. All you guys out there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Jack Ripper says, have a Thanksgiving. Thank I was going to say to you. Have a nice Thanksgiving if you guys are celebrating. If you're not celebrating, if you're in a country that's not celebrating the most awesome uh, feast-worthy day of the American calendar, then uh, have yourself, uh, you know, give yourself, you know, get the extra fries. Get the, get the extra side of, of a sauce on your, whatever it is. Have yourself a little, a second helping. And, uh, and know that we are also thinking of, you know, hopefully we can all be, uh, we can all be thinking of the, of the good and positive things of all the, of, of the world and peace on earth that kind of thing right a little too early for peace on earth right because that's christmas peace on earth and goodwill toward all men right and women and everything else that you want to identify as <laughs> peace on earth, peace to all all right guys that's it for me we'll come back next week and i'll see you then take care now
Bye-bye.